Meet Alex and Paul. Their teacher uses Pingo in one of his lectures. The first results revealed that students had differing opinions as to the correct answer to a certain problem. The lecture, therefore, gives them the opportunity to discuss their answers amongst themselves. But how exactly does the so-called peer discussion work? What should students do in order to reap the greatest benefits from the test? This is how it works. Alex asks Paul which answer he chose. One thought it was correct, the other thought it was incorrect. But now wait for the lecturer's explanation on the right answer. No, wrong. It's questionable whether Alex and Paul have actually understood the content put to them. For sure, one of them got the wrong answer, but the other might simply have guessed the correct answer. Who knows? But what use is this to the level of understanding to them anyway, when it comes to their next test or real-life application? So maybe we should do it like this. Paul doesn't just give Alex a solution, but also his reasoning behind it. Since Alex arrived at another solution, both now have to try to convince the other of the results. Jointly, they discuss whether the statement is right or wrong. In this way, they have to engage their critical thinking while grappling with the rationale behind their answer. In this process, they hit upon new questions and contradictions which the discussion can help resolve. In the end, Alex and Paul arrive at a solution which they both find convincing. As you can see, the strength of the peer discussion lies in the exchange of different assumptions and perspectives which lead to the correct solution and provides the opportunity to deepen their knowledge.